Hi, Harry. Hello. Um, <laughs> so uh, let me go ahead and start and just ask you a bit about the size of your operations here in China, how big your fund is, and uh, how many companies you guys have, are invested in right now. Sure. Okay. So um, I, I guess a lot of people might have heard of Matrix before because we're, we're kind of like 30 years in uh, headquartered in Boston. We've got a San Francisco office as well. Uh, but the China part of it only started in 2008. Uh, the first, one, first fund was raised roughly about two years ago, fund size 275 million US. Uh, so far, we have invested in about uh, 16, 17 companies so far, all in, exclusively in China. So we are an early stage um, technology investor, very similar to what um, Eric and, and other Silicon Valley firms. Uh, we like TMT, uh, internet mobile, digital media, online gaming, that, that contributes to uh, uh, a larger part of our investments. And then on the other hand, we also invest in healthcare, clean tech, consumer, uh, and other sectors as well. Um, can you talk about you know some of the companies that you've invested in and um, the successes you had and sort of what criteria you look at when it comes to making those investments and your exits uh, in the future with those companies? Okay, so um, it, it's a relatively uh, early fund, so it's too early to talk about success, but I can uh, walk through some of the portfolios that, that uh, I think worth mentioning. Um, there's one company in the, um, I think we, we should be in the pipeline of trying to go out for an IPO uh, in, the, in the next 12 months. It's the company in the real estate online market. It's called Andrew Ke. So it's a company that was invested by Matrix US um, back then and then Matrix China. We came in uh, and did the B round and then it was completely exclusively a Matrix deal uh, since day one. Um, so we kind of like incubated the pro project very very early on and then it grows with them. Um, they started off in Shanghai and now they were in 11, 12 cities. It's ba basically uh, growing very aggressively all around China. Um, in the first, I, I would say that in Shanghai and Beijing, they were already maybe even number one in, in, in this particular market. So what they do is kind of like an online classify. People or agents are, are our, our main users that put on to you know, um, apartments, houses, for sale, for rent, uh, mainly second hands into our website and then so that people can browse and, and interact and, and that's it. So. Um, you know, it's been growing pretty fast, and, and that's the sexy part of it for for an internet business. Um, the company is so uh, it, it's been very profitable, and we're trying to go out sometime, if not this year, maybe next year. So, so with this company, for example, I mean, it's you know, it's it's been really successful, but you know, from sort of the beginning, what type of criteria were you looking at when you when you were looking at this company? I guess um, the, the main thing that we like is, um, first of all, real estate is a huge market in China. You know, um, there are a lot of people buying houses and, 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 and uh, so, so by itself is a huge market. But on the other hand, there are not that many, I would say, sophisticated players in the online, online part of it, the servicing uh, users who want to rent, who want to buy, who wants to, or agents who want to better broadcast the, uh, their kind of inventory that they have. So. That's how we started. Um, so first of all, it's a very big market. And uh, the second most important idea that we like it is it started off from an entrepreneur who's really local. He knows very uh, very well about the market. Uh, he, he came from the sector. And then at the same time, um, another thing that we like is, is his execution ability is extremely strong. Um, so there's one key thing about investing in China that, that what we truly believe is because there's no really, um, I would say, secrets of running any uh, company especially in the internet business in China, people do copy once another, uh, especially in hot sectors. You know, recently we've been talking a lot about, you know, uh, in the e-commerce sector, there's like one um, uh, a company called Groupon in the US, which is extremely popular. And there were people saying that there were 300 copycats in China now. Uh, that's similar to Guild Group as well in, in China, similar copycat, there, were, there could be at least like 20 to 50. So, I mean, that, that applies the same to the online real estate market. So, who different differentiate them, them from the others, really the execution is really who can roll up the sleeves and do the work and know uh, what to do best, focusing on the China market and serving the, 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 the users good. Um, I mean, what's interesting is I, I actually was having a conversation with an angel investment firm uh, last week and, and they were telling me that you know when it, when it comes to looking at entrepreneurs in China, they actually would prefer to invest in someone who's local who's not a returnee necessarily, because the returnees can't necessarily roll up their sleeves and, and get dirty, like you sometimes you know, understand really what the everyday Chinese need in their lives. 
do you have sort of a similar sense, or what do you think? Yeah, uh, uh, I guess we're we're in general agreement. I I will not completely exclude uh, people who are from other parts of the country, uh, foreigners, expats, or returnees, whatever. But um, I, I think what we value most is the experience that they have in China. Um, you know, uh, how long have they been working here? Uh, what, what kind of things have they, have they been doing here? Because everybody who comes here, they have to pay a price to, you know, to, to, to learn about the market, how to navigate the systems, how to do the things, you know, above the table or bracket below the table, whatever. So, um, so you know, getting to know China is extremely important. And I do see uh, successful entrepreneurs, actually, uh, even foreigners. You know, I, I think this morning, uh, Fritz from China is actually a very famous entrepreneur, but he has been in China for 10 plus years. So I, I think the number of years in China do matters, and the longer is the better. So, but on the other hand, I mean, if you have two same guys standing in front of me, one just came back, one has been here for a long time, I would obviously prefer somebody that actually have more experience, uh, either, either learning, working, uh, or, or doing his own business in China. Um, you know, in terms of a fund here um, with also offices in the West, I mean, how much, how much control do you have in terms of, you know, just investing in whatever you want to here versus having to kind of go back to the, the home office elsewhere? Yeah. What's it like? I, I guess that depends on uh, the fund and uh, different types of the fund as well. I think uh, Matrix, similar to a, a number of our counterparts as well in, the, in, in, in China, like maybe KP, Sequoia, some of them, uh, like us, we have total uh, autonomy in China. So we, we, we control the investment committee, we, we, we make our own rules, uh, we do our investments without the need to uh, really go through our US office for approval. So that actually gives us an advantage of, of uh, you know, reacting quicker, uh, better understand the market, and do things that we believe in in the market. I think that's uh, one key that uh, to be successful in China, not only to be an entrepreneur, but as well to, to manage a fund. You just have to call your shots and, and you just have to believe in, in the guys who's running the China office. Um, so, but there are, of course, some funds that, that, that are flying fly out. There are global funds, there are global brands that they have to go to, to, to the international, I would say, investment committees for approval. Um, uh, that oftentimes, I think, um, will, will create some kind of like, I wouldn't say issues but complexity in terms of approval process uh, and and as of now you see you know good deals are oftentimes uh, being chased by a number of ECs and being able to react quickly matters a lot right. yeah I mean this is obviously a very hot market there's a lot of money in it um, what is sort of your strategy in terms of uh, getting in on those good deals and keeping your deal flow going here right now I guess it's to um, it's really to build a brand out there because um, you know you 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 have to let people know that you know we're we're a fun. We're not only the kind of people that that have the money because there's so many people that have the money. Uh, it's really how much value that you can add. Whether they 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 prefer to work with the partners within the fund and it, and each funds have their own angle or strategy in a way. Um, so we are define ourselves as a very early stage fund. We like to work with entrepreneurs on you know an oftentimes basis. We don't. We don't do, you know, official, you know, quarterly board meetings. We just do casual chat-ups on a, on a weekly basis. We try to help them a lot. Uh, we try to help them even if, even, even sometimes we don't invest in the deal. We try to keep a good relationship with them so that they can help us to spread our words out. Um, just overall, I, I think, you know, that the, the kind of value that I think entrepreneurs really need uh, the help in, in the entire process of growing the company. And we try to be as friendly as we can. Um, just sort of wrapping up here, I'm wondering, you know, you said you're mentioning uh, that you're considering an IPO pretty soon with this company. Um, the, 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 the domestic exchanges are very, you know, hot right now. Is that sort of changing consideration with IPOs in terms of where to, to go public, whether in China or in, in elsewhere? Okay, um, I, I wouldn't say that it will be changing the, the, the thinking that we have, because I think different um, stock exchange have different uh, preferences or, or criteria in a way. Uh, I mean, it will be pretty. Uh, it will be more beneficial for an internet company to go to the U.S. because you you can you can have a lot more mature investors that knows about the internet industry that knows that investing in them, even though if you're you're sometimes not profitable, you're you're in there for long and you can be really scalable. Putting a similar company into the local stock exchange may scare people off sometimes. If you miss one quarter of of, of your earnings 
things, then 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 your share price may may drop to almost zero. I mean that happens uh, before, and I, I think that will also happens in China. So I, I think you know you ha have to think thoroughly about you know what kind of company is suitable for what kind of stock exchange. So a lot of people have been talking about local stock exchange that's opening. Uh, it's actually good for us because it is another alternative. But whether that alternative always fits into the kind of portfolios that we have, it doesn't. But maybe for some kind of portfolios that are more, I would say, local. Say, for example, if we're investing in the um, you know, uh, consumer industries, uh, chain restaurants, it could be education, it could be you know, human resources that, that ties, win, ties in with the uh, entire China economy. That kind of company, I think, will be benefit a lot more uh, listing locally because they can benefit from the brands and people know about the business and they are relatively more stable and traditional. But on the other hand, uh, you know, when I'm talking about you know, mobile gaming or, uh, or, or pure internet business, I think the number one uh, desired or preferred stock exchange is still going offshore. I, I'm just curious, I mean, how difficult is it to, to list locally from, from a, a sort of global fund versus domestic? Are there, what, what are the main differences, if, if you know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, first of all, structure matters a lot because I mean, we, we when, when we come into a, when we go into a company, uh, uh, you you have to define a legal structure, and sometimes it could be offshore, it could be onshore, and onshore there could be JV structure that could be using your pure RMB fund to make investments in China. Uh, all these will dictate how it goes in, on a long-term basis because if you make a wrong uh, structure on day one, it's still changeable, but it takes a lot of effort for you to change it back to local listing if you want to go. So, so uh, at, at the moment of that, we, we just have to think very carefully. And uh, in terms of listing, I think, I mean, once the structure is done, it's all about, you know, many, many things. It could be, you know, lining up, it could be relationship, it could be a lot of, a lot of many other things. All right. Well, um, anything else you, you'd like to add? Any predictions for the future about what you guys are going to do? Anything else? Uh, not much, but uh, just like you know, Eric, you know, do a bit of uh, uh, advertising for our fund as well. We like early stage mobile internet companies. So if if you have any uh, startups, come talk to me. I'll be happy to talk to you guys. Thanks a lot.